Is it theoretically possible to figure out where each amount of latency is coming from? Like would a 10 millisecond radio link latency plus 40 millisecond video link be identical to 25 plus 25? Yeah, I, I don't think it's possible to tell where the latency is coming from because here's why. All that you know is I moved the stick and I saw something happen in the goggles. And I moved the stick and I saw something happen in the goggles. And that loop keeps happening. That is all you know. There is no way for you to tell where the additional latency is being added, right? Okay, now that I've said that, I want to argue with myself. If you ever talk to me and I, I just argue with you, please know that I do it to myself as well. Video latency with DJI and Walksnail is not consistent. It's changing, right? It goes up and down as you get further away and closer. Control link latency is essentially constant. In reality, it's not constant. There's a little bit of, of jitter, but it's relatively constant. So theoretically, if you notice that the latency is changing and the video is stuttering, you could infer the additional latency was coming from the video link, right? But that's not exactly the question you asked. Kira Dennis, thank you for five Canadian dollars. What's the best method for connecting a controller to a PC for use with simulators? Uh, USB, Bluetooth, ESP, LRS, squid stick, etc. Um, Kira, in my opinion, it's USB. All of those other methods add a small amount of latency. And in my opinion, one of the things that makes simulators feel less realistic is additional latency. Now, the latency situation is a little weird anyway. Like, what is the latency of a, a, of a joystick input on a computer? Is it faster or slower than the latency of a normal RC control link? I don't actually know. Like, obviously, joysticks are, you know, they're not like terrible latency. But is the, are they tuned to the same low latency as like a real aircraft that you're flying in the real world? Don't know. But if you show me a, a, a Wi-Fi interface or an, a squid stick interface where I've got a wireless connection, that's adding latency. And I kind of don't like it. I always plug in with USB. And it means there's a cable dangling out of my controller. But I, who cares? I don't care. Eh, that's, that's my opinion. Uh, when flying, what's the first thing that switches off when the battery is very low? It's not the motors. The motors will keep running until the battery is just completely dead. They won't make enough thrust to fly. Like you will like land whether you like it or not, but they will try to keep spinning. Um, a lot of times the VTX or the camera sags out first. They're often only good down to 2S. The VTX is often only good down to 2S. The camera is usually good down to 5, uh, five volts if it's analog. Um, and so I think the VTX is usually the first thing to go. Then again, then again, some VTX are good down to like three volts. And so the whole thing will just sit there and wait for, wait for you to come unplug it without anything dying. Uh, here's a question from Notice who asks, Joshua, approximately three years ago in your Betaflight core temp warning video, you said, turn that crap off. Do you stand by that statement? Yep. Yep. Core temp warning is meaningless. What are you going to do? It's meaningless. Like, let's, let's, let's think about it this way. I'm going to use a, a little bit of a dark example. Okay. Let's say you go to the doctor and the doctor says you have an incurable terminal disease. There is no cure for it. You get your, get your, get your things in order. There's nothing you can do about this. You're, 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 you're going to die. Well, like, Obviously, that news is going to have an effect on you, right? But ultimately, there's nothing, there's nothing you do about it. So my point is that if, there, if I'm being told that there's something happening and there's nothing I can do about it, well, I guess it's not a great example because, like, if you have an incurable terminal disease, you're, there are things you can do. Like you could get your, you could, you know, do, get your will, and you could go on vacation. And you could do whatever you want to do at the end of your life. If I, but if I'm being told that that uh, my my flight controller is overheating, well, what am I going to do? Well, I guess I'm going to get its affairs in order. <laughs> no, uh, there's, you, you're just going to fly it.
to just turn the warning off. If it overheats, it overheats. If it shuts down, if it dies, meh, get another one. It wasn't a perfect analogy. Sometimes I, my analogies go off the rails. <laughs> what are some places I can buy 18650 batteries? Uh, I'll tell you what. I actually, um, I actually, uh, I don't know if you guys know Upgrade Energy. The com they're this company. They're this company. They make uh, batteries with 18650 and 21700 cells. And I actually have been talking with the uh, owner of the company. His name is Matthew Barnard. Just talking about batteries. It turns out the guy who owns this company is like just a giant battery nerd. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of fun. Um, we, uh, oh, I'll tell that story. I'll tell that story in a second. Anyway, uh, I was like, so, you know, what's your secret? Where do you get your cells from? You know, because he'll buy 50,000 cells and he'll make a bunch of batteries, right? Where, where do you get your cells from, huh? Hmm? huh? And he says, well, a lot of the time I just order them from 18650 Battery Store. And I was like, shut up! Shut up! He's like, yeah. You just go in. You go, okay, What I want a Molly Cell uh, P30B, okay? Molly Cell P30B, quantity 20,000. Add to cart. Uh, oh, it's, I can't do 20,000. Okay, 10,000. Add to cart. Uh, 527. Okay, that's, I got him. Anyway, <laughs> um, apparently this is where he does some of his shopping. Uh, so, uh, if it's good enough for Upgrade Energy, it's good enough for you. 18650 Battery Store is where I would buy good quality 18650 cells. There you go. Is that a real watch or is that your Fitbit? That's a watch. It is a Tissot. Yeah, it's a watch. I have a watch. There we go. I, I'm contemplating whether I should get a new band. It's like a, it's kind of like a denim. It's not really denim, I don't think, but it's kind of like a denim band. And like, I was looking at it going, I think I would like it better with like a, a brown leather band. And then my wife, she said, you know, I really like your watch. I think that's a really nice watch. And my wife doesn't comment on my appearance very often. So when she says, oh, you look really nice today. Wow, it really, it really hits. And she was like, that's actually a really nice watch. She said, I really like that it like I really like that sway the, the 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 denim band. It's not just like leather like every other watch out there. And I went, oh. <laughs> oh well. 